hello friends wish you a very good day so let's begin with uh, the employment message that accompanies your cv or resume to your employer or the recruiter and that's called the cover letter it's going to be a short lecture lecture number 21 cover letter the concepts or the topics i will be covering in this presentation will be on writing cover letters one example of cover letter will be covered apart from another example a pdf which has been displayed in another lecture number 20 on sample cvs and cover letter then i will cover the types of cover letters and a few consider cultural considerations a few cultural considerations to be adopted to be taken into importance while writing cover letters and enclosure the while closing down the lecture i will cover the persuasive covering letter at the outset i would like you to look at this video on how to write a cover letter from the guardian united kingdom did you know a whopping 99.5% of recruiters on guardian jobs have some sort of digital application process so is a traditional cover letter dead according to our sources no almost half the recruiters we surveyed said that they'd reject a candidate who didn't send a cover letter when given the option to with that in mind here's our guardian jobs guide to writing a cover letter A cover letter is more than just a jacket for your CV. It's your first chance to talk personally to your potential employer and explain why you are the perfect candidate for the job. Tip 1: Research. Before you begin writing, make sure you've done your homework on the company, what they do, their competitors, their place in the market, and the key people that work there. You don't need to mention your findings, but your research will shine through when you begin to write your cover letter. Tip 2: Format. Your cover letter should be no longer than one side of A4 and written in an appropriate font and size. 11 or 12 in Arial or Georgia will work well if you're unsure, and you don't need to include a photo. Your cover letter doesn't need to show your pout or best side. Tip 3: Forms of address. It seems obvious, but make sure you know who you're addressing the letter to and their preferred title. Are they Mr, Ms, or Dr, for example? If you don't know, look on the company's website or make a call and find out. Small displays of initiative like this can really impress the reader. Tip 4: Tone of voice and content. Throughout your cover letter, make sure your tone of voice is professional whilst letting your personality shine through. Then think about what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Clearly indicate why you're applying for the job in the first paragraph. HR departments recommend linking your experience to the job description, if only to ensure your cover letter survives the initial sift. To give it a personal touch, include your relevant professional achievements and make sure you give some evidence to back up your claims. If you increased your company's revenue, exactly how much by? If you furthered social media reach, how many extra followers did you get and how? Remember to mention any relevant courses or qualifications you have, and if you don't have previous experience, display your enthusiasm for the role and for learning. Tip 5: The sign-off. It's universally considered a good idea to use the last paragraph of your letter to emphasize your enthusiasm for the role. Thank the employer for taking the time to consider your application and sign off politely with yours sincerely, your name, email address and telephone number. Tip 6: Proofreading. 83% of recruiters say poor spelling and grammar are the worst mistakes a candidate could make, so be sure to double check your letter. Finally, make a list of all the things you wanted to say. and check them off against what you've written then get a fresh set of eyes to spot mistakes before you press send hopefully you're feeling ready to write your cover letter now so click here to download our guardian jobs cover letter template so having received the five tips on writing a cover letter from the guardian jobs now we can come to introduction Writing cover letters is a very important art and technique 
the art and science of writing cover letter involves the following four steps. The first is the very first paragraph where you have to gain attention of the reader. Probably he or she might be your direct supervisor if you join that workplace. So, gain attention in the opening and number two carefully word your content what you will write it has to be very short simple and well arranged number three organize for conviction you have to be as if you are batting at the same time you are a lawyer you are a batsman or a bowler plus a lawyer so you have a certain quick goals to be achieved one page a four size of write up and it is only after that that the employer will be looking at your detailed CV. It may be one page, two page or it may be the electronic resume received through online submission on the company's website, job advertisement or job vacancies link. It may be a paper resume, one page or two page with the employer will look only after he has been attracted by your well written cover letter. So, let us come to the conclusion in the last fourth or fifth paragraph whatever it may be there should be four or five paragraphs in your cover letter not more not less. In the fourth or fifth paragraph you will be playing in the cover drive I take that analogy you will be driving for action in the close your intention of gaining attention in the opening you hope you have worked towards it and you will succeed. So, drive for action in the close. So, here we have uh, apart from the video which you saw here we have a cover letter example and uh, we are thinking that it would have four paragraphs 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is let us say the letter head if you are later on in a position where you can have your own company letterhead or personal letterhead then you may use this or for beginners we use a blank sheet of A4 size paper and this is the date at the top we write the date unlike other letters where we write the date after writing the addresses section. After the date this is the receiver's address, this is the receiver's address and this is the opening salutation. In the opening salutation you may write something like this, it is framed in the form of a question. This is a very unique sample of a cover letter and that I thought and that is the reason why I thought that I should present it before you. So, the candidate whoever it is will come to know soon writes after saluting dear Mr. Guthrie. Again note that there is a colon after the salutation. Unlike the way we have been used to or the way we might have been taught in school, I am not uh, downplaying your school, but the idea is that we have been brought up with a conviction or with an idea grammatically speaking or punctuation wise that after the salutation we put a comma here, but that is not the case. The correct application or the function of a colon that is dot dot after the salutation is that the rest of it follows and so the rest of it follows therefore, it has to be a colon which succeeds the salutation. So, let us proceed the candidate writes dear Mr. Guthrie and he begins with a question I said this was little bit uh, out of the way and he says does your interest in employing an accountant as indicated by your advertisement in today's issue of the post center on finding a person who has had some experience in petroleum accounting, is college trained in accounting and has demonstrated the ability to work with others. Now, you see the candidate is not as you know tongue in cheek pulling the leg of the prospective employer or dear Mr. Guthrie, he or she is just stating in the form of a plain and simple question the qualifications which are prescribed 
or which are required for a candidate who is going to apply for the post of an accountant in the advertisement as published in today's issue of the post. So, the next paragraph is the main paragraph where the candidate says is the main paragraph this one in orange where the candidate says with a background of three years as a part time employee of the state comptroller of public accounting and the state auditor's office and with four years of specialized training in the college of business administration at state university I am the person who meets your requirements and it is now you very well understand it is easy to understand how and why he used the question in the very opening sentence of the cover letter. So, he says he fulfills the requirements which were as per the advertisement in today's issue of the post. To continue further the candidate writes as an auditor in both the state departments mentioned above I participated in audits of the books of several oil firms and gained some familiarity with petroleum accounting procedures which would increase my usefulness in future work of this type. Note again that the candidate is humble and is not blowing his trumpet. He says I gained some familiarity. He does not say that he is fully conversant and fully competent and has complete cover, uh, control over petroleum accounting procedures, but he says that he has gained in his prior work experience some familiarity with petroleum accounting procedures and therefore, he thinks that he is suitable to do this job or it increases it is like a feather in his cap it increases his chances of doing such kind of work in the future. In the next paragraph we have paragraph number 3 the candidate writes in my intensive coursework at the university I studied several phases of accounting including petroleum fiduciary cost and systems as well as theory and auditing with the intention of obtaining a background a comprehensive and well integrated background for competent work in the petroleum field. Note here once again that important details are highlighted by putting them in parenthesis or bracket including petroleum fiduciary cost and systems as well as theory and auditing. And he says please look at the attached resume to note the additional courses with which I rounded out my training. Additionally the candidate looks at himself his profile his work x and is confident that the other courses he has completed in course would be almost or to the best possible level fulfilling his training requirements for the job advertise. Last sentence the sincerity of my study efforts is evidenced by the BBA degree with honors I was awarded this June and then he comes to the latest academic achievement which is the BBA degree in honors which he received this June. Let us move to the next paragraph and this is this paragraph in orange the candidate writes with a view to the value of human relations in business. I actively participated in organizations such as Sigma Nu, Social Fraternity, Intramural Volleyball, Men's Chorus and Delta Sigma Pi Professional Fraternity. So, as we have said in our lecture and classes on CV writing, the point is that nobody is only looking at your hard skills, your B.Tech or your B.Sc or B.Com or B.B.A, M.Tech, Ph.D. so on and so forth and your gold medals and your high CGPA. The employer is also interested in your extracurricular and non-academic activities and those are listed here. Through these associations to move further the candidate writes through these associations I learned a lot about people and how to work with them. This is called people skills as you know the CV is your marketing document and the marketing process has begun in the 
cover letter itself the candidate says that he is a people skilled oriented person. And lastly he says I am confident that I could work effectively with your accounting department staff. This is like sending a positive vibe or a positive message where the candidate says that he is very sure, he is quite sure rather that he could gel in, he will fit in with the accounting department staff at the post advertised for which he is writing this cover letter. Let us move further and this is the concluding paragraph which is this one in orange. And he says, as my interests lie in useful and satisfying work in the field of petroleum accounting, may I meet you personally and talk with you? So, this is a very humble, simple and gentle way of seeking an appointment, of course official, even before the proper recruitment process has begun, because this kind of face to face meeting, if you personally go to a workplace after you have got a yes to this question in writing or formally, it creates a rapport, it creates a platform from where you can take off, because most times candidates do not write this kind of humble, bold, yet strong request, it is yet a strong request. And he says, I can make myself available at any date convenient for you, knowing that he is writing to somebody who is busy, who has uh, important company roles and responsibilities at his hands. The candidate says that he is available at any date, which is convenient for the reader. And sincerely, note once again, as we had shown in the sample letter, the sample letter, the PDF copy of Herman D. Brown in lecture 20 that there is no need to write yours sincerely and yours faithfully, simply write sincerely. You do not belong to the others that you should write your sincerely. You can write your son or you can write simply son, you do not even write that, you write your name if you are the son to your father. Similarly, here in the same logic you write sincerely and you can put your signature above your typed name, your typed name should be within bracket and there is this space here where you can put your signature and the enclosure which means your CV should be attached. So, before we move further, here is a short video on 5 steps to an incredible cover letter. So, your cover letter. I want you to put just as much focus and energy into your cover letter as you do your CV. Even if they don't read a cover letter initially, when it comes further down the sifting process, maybe they've got two interview slots left and five candidates that they've shortlisted, at that stage they will absolutely go to the cover letter and use that to help make their decision. So, make it count. So the first step is making it personal, okay? I don't want you to send a cover letter out that says, dear sir, dear madam, to who it may concern, dear hiring manager. You need to find out the person's name, okay? We have social media, we have LinkedIn, we have Google. The, the company probably has a website uh, with a news page, um, with an about us section. Find out, even if you have to pick up the phone, speak to the receptionist. She might not give you the name, however, just be aware some companies have no name policies, but just do your absolute best to find out the name of the hiring manager. So step two is firstly tell them what job you're applying for because lots of companies will be recruiting more than one vacancy um, and I notice that people do this all the time when they send me applications. So just make it really, really clear what position you're applying for. But tell them why you pick them, okay? Don't start talking about how fabulous you are and how relevant you are, okay? This is where a lot of job seekers go wrong. In my opinion, if you want an employer to feel interested in you, really give you the time of day, you need to make them feel like you are genuinely interested in them. You know like when you just meet a mutual friend in a bar or something, you get introduced to somebody and that person just talks to you about themselves constantly. 
how do you feel? You probably just want to get away from them as quickly as possible. You probably feel quite negative towards them, might make an excuse and nip to the toilet or go and get a drink or something. Oh, my phone's ringing. You know, in that social circumstances, that's how we feel as human beings, okay? That's often our, our first way to feel about somebody like that. Now, your CV is exactly the same, okay? You're building rapport, you're building a relationship with somebody over a piece of paper. And often the same behaviors and the same feelings um, can be associated with that as well. So, Tell them firstly why them. Don't make an employer feel like you've just sent out an application to 100 people hoping something sticks. Even if you are doing that, and I've got lots of friends and family that are out of work at the moment, I know it's tough out there, but still go to the effort of making that person feel like they are the only person at the moment that you want to work for even if that's not the case, and they probably know that's not the case, but yeah, make them feel special. And don't do it by telling them that they, um, they seem like a professional company or they seem like an exciting company. Don't be using buzzwords like that. Everybody can see through that. Give them a real reason. Go on their website, read their news pages. Did they do, do, they do the Race for Life every year? Do they, do they get involved with Teenage Cancer Trust? Is that their national charity? Do you have a relationship with that charity? Pick something. What were the, the three directors? What was their background? Did they all start as graduates and build, build the business from nothing? Tell them about something and a, a real emotional attachment you have with them, okay? Don't just say you've been going since 1985 and um, you seem like a really um, reputable, secure business, anything like that. I mean, everyone can read a website, okay? <clears throat> Pick something real and really genuine if you want to make an impact, okay? Really make them feel special. Okay, so now you've told them why you've picked them, you've flattered them, you've got them interested in you, you've got them on your side. Now you need to tell them why they should pick you, okay? And this is really, really important. Go back to your work, but go back to your personal brand. Look at the attributes that you said you wanted to promote about yourself, the things that you wanted employers to perceive you as, um, and tell them about this. Do that while you're looking at the job description. Pick the top, Three, two or three things of that job description and tell them how you can add value to the business. Don't tell them you will add value to the business. Tell them how. Give them examples. And if you want to just throw in a little sneaky line from another great reference you've got to back all of that up, feel free. At this stage, you need to show them how much you want it, okay? We all want to work with people that we feel want to be there, okay? Now, even if you're using your language, just change your language a little bit. It might even be something as simple as, I would like the opportunity to discuss this application. Use the word love instead of like. I would love the opportunity. Love is often um, a, much more, a much more emotive word and will often open a lot more doors, certainly if you're in sales and you're trying to get a meeting with somebody. Love is a much more powerful word than like, but however, you have to find language that you feel really comfortable with. Maybe you'll say something like, given the opportunity, I would live and breathe this role. Really make that person feel that, goodness, this person really wants it. The amount of times I've heard back from people that have said, you know, I've said you weren't successful, unfortunately, my client didn't pick you, and they might say, oh, I'm really disappointed. And I sometimes think, really? Because your cover letter didn't suggest to me that you would be disappointed, didn't even feel like you were really that bothered. So if you really want it, tell them how much you really want it. And just to finish your CV, this is a little story that I can tell you. It was a couple of years ago, it was probably about five years ago, a gentleman applied to a job and I was advertising. At the end of his cover letter, it was a pretty good cover letter, but at the end of his cover letter he said, I would just like to wish you all the best with this piece of recruitment. Something like that. I think it might even have said, so it was years ago, I can't remember the exact words, but maybe it said something like, um, I know recruiting is quite a stressful time and I really hope it's going as well as you'd hoped. Something like that. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. He doesn't even know me and he's thinking about me. He's applying for the job, yet he's thinking about me and my feelings. And it blew my mind really. And I just thought, well, we all want to hire people that make our lives easier, that are a pleasure to be around and people that are considerate. And that one line told me more about him and his character and what he would be like if he was part of my team than almost anything else in his application. So really think about that. So follow those five steps make them know how much you want it, make them feel special, and make sure that you remember to cut and paste it into the body of the email so they're almost forced to read it rather than just an attachment.
I would like to say here that uh, while uh, the previous uh, slides of my presentation before the short YouTube video you saw just now was on the content part of the cover letter. This video I especially like because she stresses on the quality of the cover letter and I thought in a sense that supplemented the few slides which I presented before this particular YouTube video. Also you will note since we have done a class on nonverbal communication and we have also done a class on uh, body language. Uh, the kind of presentation this uh, lady made in this short YouTube video was full of uh, body language, gestures, positive gestures, full of activity and it was totally enthusiastic. She was totally lost in her presentation. So, let us come to writing cover letters. The points to be kept in mind is that you have to be specific of what you are driving at. Number two, you may include if you wish what salary you are expecting. This is of course, after 5, 10, 15 years of experience. In case you are writing an email, make it short. Sometimes email makes us ramble on and on and on because if we have a print or an A4 size paper, then we think of an A4 size or one page cover letter. But if we have an email, sometimes it does not give us an idea of how much to write. So, the idea the proposal that uh, keep email short and aim for high quality in your cover letter itself that sets the tone for you to get a good job at the end of the employment process. Types of cover letters are two, one is solicited and one is unsolicited. Solicited cover, letter, solicited cover letters are those which are written in response to an ad. The ad may be a paper ad, a web ad or an ad on the company's website itself. The unsolicited on the other hand are those which have not been asked for. Are those cover letters you write with your CV which are called first applications. You are not sure whether a vacancy exists in which you could fit in into the organization, but because either you are jobless or you are looking for a change, maybe to the extent that you may be desperate for a change. Therefore, you write unsolicited cover letters accompanying your CV. So, in this case, it is very important, it is more the important, it is uh, in fact more than important in the other case that is the issue or the case of the solicited cover letter that you have to get the attention of the reader. Why all of a sudden you do not know anybody there and you get the address and you write a cover letter with uh, accompanying CV asking or requesting for an appointment interview because your aim is to get a job in that organization. Therefore, all the more that you have to build interest in the other why he or she should be reading your CV which is attached or enclosed. You have to increase the desire of that person and to such an extent that the person is motivated to act. The person should respond ok, let us meet or please come over or let us interact, let us be in touch, maybe not now, maybe later, whatever, but there should be some action, some response in response to your unsolicited job application. Now, there are two cultural considerations to be kept in mind in view of the diverse workplace we have in today's scenario. The first is that you must adopt the right style and approach. You might have heard of United Nations Volunteers UNV and United Nations Volunteers is a very plum job. It is a good posting. Maybe the location is in very off, off the way jungle or terrorist ridden countries or areas maybe like Nigeria or Libya or some other African small places or islands but the salary is high and the challenge of the workplace is immense. I think true job satisfaction would lie if you get a job like that in the United Nations or UNB United Nations volunteers. So, you are applying to a organization or you are applying to a company let us say which is belonging to a different culture. So, think about it carefully, be tentative. We had classes on intercultural communication 
and approach your future employer in that manner. So, the proper tone and format has to be maintained in writing the cover letter for those employers who are from different cultural background than yours. I have this last video on how to write a cover letter, an example is included, this is quite complete and here will end my topic or this topic on the cover letter. Please watch. Writing a good cover letter is a crucial step in the job search process, yet many people don't write one or put in the time to write an effective one. So how do you write the perfect cover letter? This short video will give you the necessary steps to create an effective cover letter that lands you interviews. We often hear people ask, do I need to send a cover letter? The answer is yes, you should always send a cover letter unless the job posting says otherwise. The point of the cover letter is to give a bit of an introduction as to who you are, your interest in the position, and why you'd think you'd make a good fit. It also adds a human touch to the plain old boring resume. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we're going to cover is the format, and then we'll cover things you absolutely need to mention if you want your cover letter to stand out from the hundreds of other job seekers. Okay, let's take a look at how a cover letter should be formatted. As you see in our template, the header should have your name, contact number, and email. You can keep it similar to the header on your resume, but omit your mailing address. You should then include the receiver's name, title, company name, and address. If you can't find the name of the hiring manager, don't include it. You can start the letter as, Dear Hiring Manager, but always try to make an effort to find out the hiring manager in charge. You should try to keep your cover letter between half a page to two-thirds of a page long. Remember that most employers spend less than a minute going through your resume and cover letter. No one wants to read an in-depth, page-long cover letter. Three paragraphs is a good length, and we'll go through what each paragraph should contain. We'll then show you an example of an excellent cover letter. Paragraph one should be an introduction to who you are and the position you're applying for. Include where or how you found the opening, the title, and job ID if there is one. Should also lead into the next paragraph by stating a brief summary of your qualifications or your interest in the position. The second paragraph should discuss your qualifications and achievements which show why you're a good fit for the position. Remember that you want to stand out from the hundreds of other candidates that are applying for the job. So don't just give a few examples of what you did in your last position. Show how you went above and beyond. Mention a few examples of quantifiable or measurable achievements in your career. Use compelling language and don't repeat the information in your resume. Try to bring your experience to life. And this will encourage the reader to look into your resume in more detail. In the third and last paragraph, close out by saying that you feel you're a good fit based upon your qualifications. Remember you should include a call of action, which in this case would be inviting you to an interview. And the last thing you should do is thank them for taking the time out to consider you. Let's put this template into action. Here's an example of a great cover letter. Hi Susan, I'm ready to express my interest in the accounting position you have opened on your company website with the job ID 11220. I'm a certified public accountant and confident that my experience and skill set would be a great match for this position. I have a strong knowledge of accounting principles backed by experience I have gained in the last 12 years. In my previous position, I managed the accounting of a financial consulting firm with over $30 million in revenue. I not only met expectations, but exceeded them by increasing cash flow by $4 million. I helped achieve this by changing our account receivable policy and negotiating better contracts. There's more in-depth on my experience and skills in my resume, which I would appreciate you looking over. I am certain that my experience and skill set would make me a great candidate for this position, as well as a great asset to your company. Please give me a call at the number above to schedule an interview at your convenience. I appreciate your consideration and look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, John Smith. So there you have it. Remember these three points in your resume, who you are, your qualifications and how they can benefit the employer and a call to action asking to schedule an interview. Thanks for watching and to read more tips, please visit the link in the description. At ZipJob, we write resumes that land you more interviews, guaranteed. And you can even get a free resume review by clicking the button or visiting ZipJob.com. So I hope that uh, it was a good experience and these are the few references I have used in preparation of this topic, the cover letter. I am sure it is complete in itself. Thank you and God bless you always.